just forget to mute for a few minutes. Does that look okay? Uh, yep. Uh, will you be putting that in like presentation view or complete full screen or? Good evening and welcome Recording in progress. to the November 9th, Wednesday, regular meeting of the Board of Governors for Pima Com Community College. I would like now to, to call this meeting to order. This is a hybrid meeting being recorded and live streamed on PCC TV. Thank you, PCC TV and crew. Welcome to uh, this meeting. Welcome Pima family, board members, staff, faculty, administrators, Chancellor Lambert, and most especially to our students to whom everything we do is focused. First item on the agenda, Mr. Sylvan, can you take a roll call? Yes, I'd be glad to. Mr. Klinko? Here. Dr. Hay? Here. Mr. Gonzalez? Here. Ms. Garcia? Here. Ms. Ripley? Here. All board members are present. Thank you, Mr. Sylvan. And at this time, I would like us, those who are able to rise if possible, and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Chancellor, can you please lead us? Thank you, Chancellor. So first of all, I'd like to uh, make a few remar remarks to welcome us to this meeting. And um, as you all know, midterm elections were held yesterday. A lot of, a lot of votes are still coming in, um, and we're waiting with bated breath, breath on a few of those. Um, and this board will soon, be, will soon welcome two new members. I think that it's important us, for us to remember that despite the hard-fought political campaigns, that unfortunately became very personal. All of us here tonight must not lose sight of what the taxpayers and voters of Pima County expect of us. Given the current economic situation, the abysmal high school graduation and rate and decline in college en enrollment across the nation, and the need for our employers to find the skilled workforce they need to be competitive, our community needs Pima to be focused and strong like never before. Fortunately, despite, despite the baseless and unfounded rhetoric, Pima is in, good, in a good place. The data shows it. Our finances are strong. Our enrollment is up 9%. We just opened a new $21 million expanded aviation center and a $35 million advanced manufacturing center, which will open next year. Enrollment in our new IT cybersecurity center has tripled, with students clamoring to get in. Our Automotive Center of Excellence provides state-of-the-art training. Students will not just aspire to know how to change oil, they will have a head start to designing their own future automobiles, perhaps, and running their own companies. They deserve state-of-the-art, even if they can't afford the tens of thousands of dollars to go to a four-year university. And Bringing back daycare centers, I want to mention that again, free, by the way, to students who qualify is a huge start in reaching every student that desires an education. Our new fast track programs are meeting the needs of students who need workforce credentials quickly and the manufacturer, manufacturers who desperately need skilled workers. Tens of thousands of jobs remain unfilled, unfulfilled right here in Arizona. The college, Pima Community College, has quickly pivoted from mostly in-person classes to offering a healthy mix of in-person, online, and hybrid formats that are meeting the needs, are meeting students where they are, when they need it, and in the learning format that they desire. This is really important. Compared to other community colleges in the state and nationwide, Pima has a strong foundation in place to continue to innovate and make higher education more accessible and affordable to all. That's the goal. Over the past six years, folks like Damian Klinko, Meredith Hay, Sylvia Lee, Chancellor Lambert, and the Pima Foundation had the foresight long ago and fortitude to dream big. 
and now it, it's being realized. So let's put our political differences and personal agendas aside, please, and do the work that our students, our community, and our taxpayers expect us to do. The mean-spirited personal tax must stop, and we must move forward for the sake of our students, I beg of you. They expect us to act professionally, to act in the interest of the college and the community as a whole, to continue to press for innovation and change, even when that makes some of us uncomfortable at times and most importantly, offer programs, facilities, and initiatives that move our community forward and truly change people's lives. Thank you so much for indulging me in those welcoming remarks. Um, and with that, I would like to go to our first order of business, um, which is the public comment or call to the audience. Uh, just as a remi reminder, the Pima Community College Governing Board welcomes public comment on issues within the jurisdiction of the college. Generally, the total time for public comment will be limited to 45 minutes, and comments will be limited to three minutes per individual. These time limits may be modified by the board chair or board. Individuals sharing comments are expected to communicate with decorum and respect. Individuals who engage in disorderly conduct or who use derisive or insulting language may have their time reduced or concluded by the board chair. At the conclusion of public comment, individual board members may respond to criticism made by those addressed to the board, may ask staff to review a matter, or may ask that a matter be put on a future agenda. Members of the board, however, may not discuss or take legal action on matters raised during public comment unless the matters are properly noticed for discussion and legal action. Finally, please be advised that internal college processes are available to students and employees for communication that includes complaints. So, so thank you very much. And with that, our first call to the audience is um, Ms. Uh, Michaela, Michaela Hayes. Good evening, board members, chancellor, colleagues, and guests. My name is Michaela Hayes. I serve as PCCEA president, AERC co-chair, and math faculty. Tonight, I would like to focus my comments on agenda item 5.5 regarding HLC criterion two. I appreciate the board taking a look at how to improve transparency and communication as well as accountability. There's a suggestion for the first point regarding board members' use of resources that would require board members to submit requests to pull agenda items from the consent agenda, along with their reasoning and request for further information, the Sunday night prior to a board meeting. While I understand the justification behind this suggestion, I would ask the board to consider making it a general guideline rather than a hard and fast rule. At the moment, the board has the freedom to move consent agenda items to the action item section or even table items during the meeting. I would request that you retain the ability to stay reactive to information as you receive it, for example, from co public comment at your meeting. Under the transparency point in the same document, a suggestion was made for senior leadership to document meetings with stakeholders for the board. I believe such a report would be more informative for the board if additional documentation were included such as a note from constituency groups regarding the progress made at those meetings or alternative proposals where appropriate. This structure of accountability would be a motivator for transparency for all involved. Good policy should, be not, person, should not be person dependent and creating built-in accountability in a system isn't a statement of trust or mistrust in any one person, but about communicating the values of the board. One such example of the number of meetings falling short of representing the whole story is the recent classification and compensation study. Knowing the number of meetings that occurred with employees does not give the board a clear picture of who was part of the conversation, what level of input those employees had, or the transparency of the process to the rest of the institution. A note from the constituency groups as updates were presented throughout the process or before new salary schedules were voted on would have been informative for board members. AERC is currently working with HR and finance to determine how to move forward with the newly implemented salary schedules. This process has involved mostly AERC questions um, about the current schedule being answered so far. But for at least faculty, discussions are starting to focus on what types of changes can be made to address outstanding concerns. AERC is also working with legal to review AP 1.2501, which outlines the meet and confer process for policy changes, including our compensation-based meet and confer process. These conversations are an effort to ensure that employees and administration have a shared understanding of who should be involved in policy or compensation changes for employees. However, this isn't the same as addressing the fact that substantial changes to compensation did occur last year, um, contrary to the intention of the AP. The heart of the matter is this. Employees have an HLC and PCC policy-recognized voice at, at the table in shared governance. 
The board is the body responsible for ensuring that administration respects the shared governance roles of employees. There are many initiatives at the college in which shared governance is respected, and we believe that the college is a better place as a result for both students and employees. PCCEA asked the board to implement thoughtful processes to verify that correct stakeholders are meaningfully involved in such conversations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next is Mr. Richard Hernandez. Next call to the audience, public comment. Mr. Richard Hernandez, are you there? Can you hear me okay? We can hear you now, go ahead. Perfect. Good evening, Pima College family. I wanna congratulate Teresa Rio. She has knocked on thousands of doors. She's probably been to your home. She spoke to you about her vision. She is concerned about the number one reason Pima College exists it is its students. I would be remiss if I took the position that the chair just declared. This has been not a nice event. I have been attacked by Damian Klinko and the chair, and I need to speak to it. What I wanna tell you, the Pima College family, is thank you for your votes. Thank you for caring about our students. That is the only reason Pima College exists. It is time to fire the chancellor and many on his team to include Sylvan Davis, B. Burdick, and others. Why, you might ask yourself? Because they have not served our students. It is time to move forward. It is time to make decisions where the only thing that matters is the student. Clearly, and I mean absolutely clearly, that has not been the case for a number of years. And to you, Damian Klinko, I will continue to move forward with my complaint to the Attorney General's office. I have reason to believe for many years you have not lived in the residence that you claim. And we will let the legal process work out those differences. Quite frankly, I am thrilled to be here with you today because I believe we are going to refocus. I know the magic in education is between teachers or faculty and students not administration. And the last four to eight years, the emphasis has been special interests, big money, business, everything but my students. In my community in the Sunnyside area, we have been neglected. We have been abused. We have misused millions of dollars. I look forward to the new changes and I am hopeful that we will get back on track so that the only reason this college exists is our students. That should be our only focus. And for those of you who have wronged us in the community, I'm calling you out. Thank you for hearing me this evening. Thank you, the Pima College family, for voting in new leaders. Hopefully with a new chancellor, we can get on with the business of education and help our youth, our students in Pima, County's Community College. It's your school. It does not belong to this administration. It belongs to you and me and all of us who love this place. Thank you for your vote. And again, Teresa, I assume you're on somewhere. Congratulations. I know you've worked endless hours, probably put in a thousand miles, not to mention cost. You had a typical David and Goliath election. You had someone with $150,000 and you had just the kind heart, your love for the school, your good intentions, and that will thank make you, very, you a great Thank you very much for your time. You've gone 20 seconds over, but thank you very much. We need to move on. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is governing board recognition. And uh, one of the things that I would like to personally uh, recognize is the fact that one of our board members who served um, for six years uh, is now um, at the end of her term. Uh, Dr. Meredith Hay, you've served beautifully, wonderfully, and loyally for six years. And on behalf of the board, thank you for your service. Thank you for your undying loyalty to the school and all of your time and efforts and, and love for this community. We really, truly appreciate everything you've done and we wish you all the best in wherever life takes you next. 
Thank you. It's been my honor. Thank you so much. And next, I would like to turn it over, I believe, to Dr. DeRay. We have a lot of other people to congratulate and award and recognize at this time. Thank you, Board Chair Ripley, uh, members of the Governing Board, Chancellor, colleagues, students, and guests. So it is our honor to uh, recognize the board this evening is recognizing uh, students and employees for their contributions uh, and, and, and to really acknowledge their, their accomplishments. And so I will start with the uh, students. We have one student to honor this evening, and that is Mr. Webster Rose. And Webster received the 2021 Excellence in E-Learning Outstanding E-Learner Student Award from the Instructional Technology Council. Congratulations to, to Webster. And our next category is our employees. We have a number of employees, and we'll start with Ms. Stacy Naughton, who completed the Six Sigma Greenbelt Certification from Troy University. Next is our provost, Dr. Dolores Duran Serta, who was selected as the alumna of the year by the College of Humanities at the University of Arizona. Next is Mr. Kevin Start, who earned the 2022 Achievement of Excellence in Procurement Award from the National Procurement Institute. Ms. Jennifer Moore also earned the 2022 Achievement of Excellence in Procurement from the National Procurement Institute. Ms. Carol Quintana earned the 2022 Achievement of Excellence in Procurement Award from the National Procurement Institute. Ms. Jennifer Barnett also earned the 2022 uh, Achievement of Excellence in Procurement Award. Ms. St Stephanie Weatherly uh, also earned the 2022 Achievement of Excellence in Procurement Award. And Mr. Charles Ibunaha uh, received the 2022 Achievement of Excellence in Procurement Award. Ms. Jody Valenzuela earned the 2022 Achievement of Excellence in Procurement Award as well. Ms. Gracie Dominguez earned the 2022 Achievement of Excellence in Procurement Award uh, as well. Ms. Nariada Barales received the 2022 Achievement of Excellence in Procurement Award. Ms. Kim Rowe uh, also received the Excellence in Procurement Award. Ms. Delso Vasquez received the 2022 Achievement of Excellence in Procurement Award. And Mr. Terry Robinson received the 2022 Achievement of Excellence in Procurement Award. Congratulations to all of our procurement specialists. Next is Mr. Stephen Ebel, who was recognized as a 2022 E Lumineer of the Year. Congratulations. Mr. James Johnson received a certificate of graduation from the APPA Institute of Facilities and Management. Mr. Robert Leone received his B1 Residential Building Certification from International Code Council. Ms. Vanessa Moon became a Fire Inspector 1 and Code Enforcement Official from the Arizona Center for Fire Service Excellence also became a food processing authority from the Association of the Food and Drug Officials. Ms. Donovan Bean received the Automotive Service Excellence G1 certification. Ms. Charlie McConnell received a specialization certificate in construction procurement from the Institute for Public Procurement. Ms. Kayla Shaw received the Instructional Technology Council Award for Outstanding E-Learning Course, Digital Media Producer. And Mr. Francisco Reynoso received the Instructional Technology Council Award for Outstanding E-Learning Course as the Lead Web Designer. And Ms. Kim Lisa Salazar Duchicella was recognized as a Distinguished Educator by the Instructional Technology Council. Mr. Maria Diaz de Sandy was recognized by the Instructional Technology Council for contributing to the outstanding e-learning course CL, C, CUL 130. Mr. Tom Tenney received the 2022 Educause Horizon Report for implementing the Associate Instructional Design Academy. 
and Mr. T. Adam Baldry was recognized for his interactive video, play pause it interactive video patient simulations being published in a journal by the Department of Pharmacy Practice and Science. And Mr. Reed Dixon received the D2L Excellence Award for its innovation use of D2L as a conference platform. And Mr. O Ms. Olga Chumakova received the Instructional Technology Council Award for Outstanding eCourse uh, CUL 130 Instructional Designer. And Ms. V. Ha Haas published a piece on World Education's et et Educational Technology Hub, building on a pilot HyFlex ESOL glass at Pima Community College. And finally, Ms. Libby Howe received the Public Relations Society of America Southwest Regions 2022 PR Professional of the Year. Please join me in recognizing all of our awardees this evening. And thank you, uh, Board Chair, back to you. Thank you so much, Dr. Duray. This is a, a, an exciting time and it's always a pleasure and, and a lot of fun to award and recognize good work. And there's there's so many out there. So thanks a lot. Um, and and, it, and saving, um, saving to the end, I do also want to um, state that this we are we are sadly um, looking at uh, board member Klinko's last and final months on the board, and um, I just wanted to recognize personally as well all of the stuff that he's been doing for the last six years before, well before I got on the board. A lot of what you see that's that's happening today with our centers of excellence and with all of the innovative I, the things that have been uh, seen to the end and are in process that Chancellor Lambert is putting into process um, is all due in part to a lot of the work and championing that Damien's done at the school and within the community and his outreach is, is amazing. You ran a, an, an excellent um, a race um, and I want to applaud you for running a very clean uh, race, void of mudslinging and, um, and it was positive. So thank you for that, for, for leading the way. And um, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you and, and farewell. And with that, we, okay, we have the st uh, recognition of student artwork chosen for the, chosen, this is a fun one, a student artwork was chosen by the board um, for this year's holiday greeting card. And there were a lot, a lot more this year, a lot of entries for the, the holiday card. And um, we're happy to announce that the student that, that won the contest, and it was really hard, I have to say. They were all amazing, like really, really hard to choose. But um, Ireland Scott. Ireland Scott, your card is going to have Pima Community College um, on the inside. And, and, uh, and kudos to Jeff Lowry, the instructor. So the art department is fantastic. It's wonderful. Um, uh, I, I don't know, if, do we have a picture? You'll see it, you'll get it in the mail. It's gonna be a surprise, you, don't, you can't see it yet. Yeah, they were, some of them were absolutely adorable. Some were, it brought me to tears. Some were just gorgeous, just, you know, beauty for the sake of beauty. So, so thank you, art department. It's, it was truly hard, but a joy to, to look through those. Um, so with that, next action item is um, 1.5, Pima's mission moment. I will turn it over to um, the chancellor for that. Madam Chair, I'd like to first start out by just uh, quoting our mission, empower every learner every day for every goal. And so that frames our mission moment. So I would ask Dean Greg Wilson to join us to introduce a, a video highlighting some of our students at our recent aviation uh, ribbon cutting. Greg? Thank you, Chancellor Lambert, uh, Chair Ripley, members of the board, uh, colleagues, students and guests, and Chancellor Lambert. Uh, thank you to everybody who was able to participate in the ribbon cutting that took place for aviation on Thursday, October 20th. Uh, a lot of folks worked really hard to make this happen. Uh, and the video we're about to show uh, features Susie Roy, uh, an aviation student who was our featured student speaker at the event. Uh, and so we'll take it away from there and then I'll give you a little bit of detail about what we've been doing since the ribbon cutting.
It's been a bumpy ride for Suzanne Roy. Two years ago, COVID brought Suzanne's career as an opera singer to a screeching halt. I had found that I lost my love for, for performing. I said, I have to do something else. I have to do it. She picked up her father's tools and fixed her broken car. That led to... I've never seen safety wiring like this. Tires, wires, and sheet metal. Taking a 180 from singing, Suzanne's working toward a certificate as an aviation technician at Pima Community College. Coming here, I was just hooked. Not all AMP schools have jet air aircraft. Um, we're actually very lucky that we have the number of jet aircraft that we do. Adding to Suzanne's luck, she and her fellow students will now be able to take advantage of a much bigger classroom to the tune of 87,000 square feet. Three, two, one, touch. The PCC Aviation Technology Center unveiled a spectacular addition of a second hangar. The biggest thing for, for me is the, the space and the rooms, you know, we're not stepping on each other anymore. The $21 million structure located at the Tucson International Airport also comes with a grandiose 727 jet aircraft donated by Federal Express for the students to practice on. Workers with the company Ascent Aviation Services donated over a thousand hours of labor and all the materials to give it a custom paint job. This is a very special day for me. Okay, to the students, I'm jealous. I never had anything growing up in this industry or when I went to school that was anywhere near this. This state-of-the-art facility will double the center's enrollment. Students are offered top-notch training to become the cream of the crop when entering the workforce. And for Suzanne Roy, clenching a certificate that might lead to a high-demand job is music to her ears. These facilities are just going to be able to train people just to even be, you know, head and shoulders above the competition. If you're interested in learning more about PCC's aviation program, visit pima.edu slash aviation. And so this morning we had our aviation uh, advisory and so we got another chance to thank all of our partners uh, and just wanted to give an update uh, so you know what we are doing in the new space. Uh, as was mentioned in the video, uh, the space allows us to double the size of our program and as of today, we're serving 120 students in the day program and 50 students through JTED at night. Uh, and so we are currently serving seven cohorts. When you look to spring of 23, we will be increasing to nine cohorts. And we will also be adding a night cohort, which we have not done before. Uh, and then we will also be starting an NDT, a non-destructive testing program in the fall. So we are moving full speed ahead with using the space that we have. And uh, also an update that occurred, you know, you, you talk about our programs and why they matter to our students. Uh, one of the employers this morning uh, shared that, you know, we are looking for aviation technicians and paying $32 an hour, uh, and that includes a $5,000 stipend for tools, and for those that are moving, it also includes $10,000 in relocation fees. So the programs that we prepare, uh, you know, when students come through our programs and we prepare them for industry, uh, there are rewarding careers ahead of them, and we're just very thankful to have the space. Uh, I want to finally just thank uh, Director of Aviation Jason Bowersock, faculty lead Charlie Cook, and the entire aviation team for the fantastic work that they've been doing. Uh, thanks for your time. Thank you so much, Greg. Thank you, Chancellor. Um, it, it was indeed an incredibly impressive display uh, at the ribbon cutting. I mean, it looked like you could probably eat off the floor. Um, it, it was just beautiful. But but the, the biggest uh, take takeaway that I got was talking to some of the students that were there. A lot of the students that were there wore their shirts proudly, and so many of them already have been reached by um, by um, employers, not just locally, but across the country. So, so they're in demand. Um, I'm telling you, these these uh, students are amazing, and they're already getting getting recruited. So, thank you so much. It's, if you haven't been there, please visit. It's it's a beautiful site, and um, again, state of the art. We're really proud of it. Thanks, Greg. Um, next on the agenda is uh, item 2.1 is administrative reports uh, from our administration. And so with that, uh, 
I would like to turn it over to the Chancellor to introduce our admin reports. Madam Chair, uh, I would uh, respectfully ask that we table two of the items uh, that are uh, for slated for presentation this evening. Uh, the two items are the Chancellor's goal update for operations, and we would just move that to the January meeting, as well as the uh, admin report for spring enrollment planning presentation. And But we do have the company executive summaries here, so if the board is okay with that, I just ask that we move that over to January, but I would still like for us to receive the uh, Criterion 2 update presentation by David Parker. Okay, board members, are we good with that? Okay, start fresh in January. Okay, um, thanks, so we will start with the HLC update Criterion 2. David, are, are you there? Oh, there, here he goes. Uh, thank you. Um, Madam Chair, Governing Board Members, Chancellor Lambert, faculty, staff, students, and our guests, thank you for including this uh, update this evening. Uh, what follows is only a very brief overview of HLC's Criterion 2 and some of the examples of the types of objective, measurable evidence supportive of the assurance argument that we will be providing. So Criterion 2 focuses upon evidence of policies, processes, and expectations that govern the financial, academic, and personnel issues that ensure institutional integrity and ethics. And in this setting, the term integrity can also include the concept of institutional structural soundness, um, as well as what we think of as the typical meeting. Uh, the HLC accredits institutions of all types, sizes, and complexities and recognizes uh, institutional context and cultural differences in application of its core criteria. And for the first time, we are clearly documenting our consistency with the HLC's assumed practices as part of this process as well. Uh, criterion 2 was identified in our 2018 reaffirmation as having some concern, all of which were identified from the Auditor General's prior year report. So, it's not the reviewers finding something. They had adopted some findings from another type of report or audit. And that just brings home how important each of those are. Since then, all identified concerns have been fully or resolved. Uh, neither the Auditor General nor the HLC have identified any concerns under this criterion uh, until the HLC's recent focused visit. In fact, the Auditor General hasn't identified any additional concerns since then. Uh, speaking of the recent visit, work is already underway to address both board governance related items for an interim report due in about 10 months and providing additional clarity in the complaint or dispute resolution process as part of our assurance argument due a year later. Uh, as we address both areas, it will be critical that we are consistent, not just with law regulation and accreditation standards, but also with our own policies. And it is fully appropriate to revisit and adjust our own policies, but we must demonstrate that we act consistent with them. Uh, each core criterion has subpoints that help define what they mean. And I have uh, included the focus of the subpoints in blue on the right side of each slide and the full statements and some examples of objective evidence that support our arguments are included in the executive summary, which we will track uh, in this discussion. Uh, criterion 2A focuses upon how the institution develops and the board adopts its mission. That's something we did fairly recently. It was very uh, involved and transparent, included the community as well, and that one will be very easy to document. Uh, criterion 2B asks the college to document how we ensure that the accuracy uh, of our representations and to demonstrate how we support our claims related to the educational experience. Criterion 2C relates almost solely to board governance. It has more subpoints than any other and covers more territory uh, than any simple reading would imply. And it is also the subject of the upcoming interim report. I won't be reading any of the other specific criterion, but I think it helps to read 2C1 and as I read it, I think of how when somebody puts two sentences together with a semicolon, that usually adds weight to the second sentence 
in light of the first sentence. So reading it in light of that, the governing board is trained and knowledgeable so that it makes informed decisions with respect to the institution's financial and academic policies and practices, semicolon, and then the board meets its legal and fiduciary responsibilities. So the HLC places emphasis on informed decision making and acting consistent with the college's own policies and procedures. Uh, adjusting our policies is appropriate, as mentioned a moment ago, and acting consistent with them is considered part of the board's fiduciary responsibilities. Uh, the focus of the next three sub-criteria include preservation and enhancement of the institution, uh, reviewing reasonable and relevant interests of internal and external constituencies during deliberations, and preserving board member independence from undue influence. And the final sub-criteria addresses delegation of day-to-day -day management to the institution's administration and the expectation that our provost and faculty will oversee academic matters. So uh, policies and training are fairly easy to document and our enterprise risk management and compliance efforts will provide additional information and documentation that we may not have seen so readily or have been so apparent in the past. Uh, informed decision-making and preservation of independence can be a little more challenging to document. And this is one of those cases where perception can be just as important as reality. And the discussion Dr. Weeks had with the board at its last study session should help us identify evidence for the report. Uh, moving on to 2D, our state laws, policies, codes of ethics, freedom freedom of expression report and orientation programs provide a foundation. And we will also provide documentation of ways that the college supports diverse thinking and opinions. Uh, core criterion 2E begins with a focus upon institutional support for basic and applied research. And it's easy to say that we don't do much of that and just uh, put it aside but we can apply the general principles to the general learning environment. And this core criteria evaluates our compliance and ethics programs, guidance, uh, support, and the conduct primarily of faculty and students in the learning environment. Finally, I have greatly paraphrased just the most brief statements, uh, core criterion two, excuse me, criterion two related assumed practices into just basic concept statements. And the HLC begins with the assumption that we meet the standards of each of these statements, uh, but we are intentionally evaluating any potential gaps and we will identify how each is well documented through the same standard of evidence. As you heard from Dr. Richmond last month regarding criterion one, there is also a team working through each criterion two statement identifying our level of fulfillment and identifying evidence supporting the assurance argument that we will present. Uh, any identified weakness or potential issue will be addressed so that the development of our assurance argument can begin next summer. And Jeff and I would be happy to respond to any questions that you may have. Thank you so much. Any questions from the board? No I heard somebody speaking, but I couldn't hear what was said. No, no I, I believe there are no questions. No. Oh, thank no. you. No. Thank you for your work on this. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Th yes, thank You're you so well. much. I just wanted to add that we, we do have uh, a lot to look forward to next year, and I know that everyone's uh, girding their loins to prep for this. So so thank you for, for uh, being behind the scenes to do this for us. All right, um, next is uh, item 2.2. Thank you so much again. Um, reports by representatives to the board. And first up is our student report from T.T. Martinez. Hello, one second. Oh no. Hello, we see you. Yes, one second, I'm so sorry, I apologize. Oh no. Hello, Board of Governors. Um, I have a few updates to share with you all regarding the Student Senate. To start, the date of our fall semester Student Senate Town Hall meeting will be Tuesday, November 29th, 2022. 
from 6.30 to 8 p.m. in the Amethyst Room downtown. The event is currently posted on Pima Engage, and there is a form in the event for students to submit comments and questions to have their voices heard on the student issues and things they would like to have addressed. During the town hall, Student Senate will provide updates on what we have been working on during this semester. Student Senate was involved at the new student welcome event at downtown campus and got to interact with many of our fellow students. As of today, we are attending events and making ourselves known to the students at all Pima events, which can be found on Pima Engage on the Pima Engage website. Questions and our concerns can be directed to our email at pcc studentsenators at pima.edu. And as of right now, that is all I have to report to you. We are working currently on our project and we hope to get that to you at the next Board of Governors meeting. Super, thank you so much, TT. That was, that was great. And I'm glad to hear that we're having a, a student town hall. Um, we've discussed this in the past and I hope Chancellor and faculty will take me up on this. Um, uh, I think it's a great idea to have a, a town hall very soon for faculty as well. I think um, it's important to have some, uh, in, in a more casual environment, focus just on you and, and not at a, a big public board meeting. So, so thanks so much. Next we have adjunct faculty report, um, Sean Mendoza. Uh, good evening, Chairwoman, uh, Chairwoman Ripley, uh, Chancellor Lambert, members of the board, and honored guests. Adjunct faculty continue to work with college administration and our peers with the AERC committee to improve policies at the college. Two policies currently in development include clarifying adjunct faculty and full-time faculty roles at the college and compensating adjunct faculty for their prep work in the event that their class is canceled or no longer available be uh, before the first day of class. To help inform our representatives, a survey was created and distributed to, the, uh, to document our unique perspective on services provided to students before, during, and after the first day of class. Although the data gathered thus far is still in its preliminary stages, we hope that this survey will help create a starting point for continued discussions pertaining to a future tier of our existing adjunct faculty tiered system. And lastly, uh, I would like to be the first to wish everyone a happy early Thanksgiving. <laughs> uh, this ends my report. Thank you so much th and happy Thanksgiving to you as well. And also, as always, thanks for all you do, Sean. Um, next is staff report uh, with Erica Elias. Good evening, Chairperson Ripley, members of the board, chancellor and guests. Uh, staff Council asked me if I could please uh, read this statement. Staff Council leadership following this important and critical election cycle wishes to express gratitude to the entire college for its continued excellence and dedication to provide outstanding educational opportunities for Tucson and Pima County. As an indication of that commitment to reform and improvement, at Pima's acknowledgement in Forbes magazine as a top tiered institution to work for in Arizona is an excellent indicator. While all institutions encounter obstacles, continuous process improvement is needed and listening to all voices is absolutely necessary. We staff council leadership again wish to express our gratitude for the opportunity to represent the staff and be employees of this essential community institution. That concludes my statement. Thank you so much and have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you so much, Erica, and, and we love you. We need our staff. You're amazing, you're awesome, and thank you so much for that. Because it, I think to get on lists, you know, a lists and awards are one thing, but it really is, it, it, it comes down to knowing we have to improve every day and not resting on our laurels. There's just always something to improve on or change. So um, we just need to keep doing that. So thank you so much. Next uh, faculty report, uh, Denise Riley. Good evening, Chair Ripley, members of the board, Chancellor Lambert, colleagues and guests. I'm your faculty Senate representative. And in this month or season of thanks, gratitude and peace, I want to thank you all on behalf of faculty at PCC for the work you do to ensure student success. As faculty, we are change agents and will continue to be. Faculty senators still have the mission and goals to increase transparency, shared governance, and communication with all facets of the college. 
We are the heart and soul of the institution as teaching and learning doesn't occur without us. Thank you again for including faculty and in driving the college mission to student success. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have administrator report by Jim Craig. Good evening, everybody. I'm Jim Craig, Dean of Business and Information Technology. <clears throat> Chair Ripley, Chancellor Lambert, distinguished board, and PCC family and friends. You've already heard about the Aviation Technology Expansion Ribbon Cutting. Uh, was an amazing event. Uh, the, uh, the Economic Development Project overall is even more amazing because of the culmination of the great statewide support and, and collaboration. Uh, like Dean Wilson said, it's going to double our student capacity and, and, and really increase the much needed pipeline of aviation professionals in our community. And uh, of all the speeches that were great, uh, this, the last speech by student uh, Susie Roy was just so motivational and so inspiring. PCC has three Bellwether submissions that made it to this year's finalist category. Now the Bellwether Awards are, are widely recognized as one of the nation's top competitive and prestigious recognition for any community college. The three uh, finalists are in the category of planning, governance, and finance uh, is, uh, is that Pima is leading the way in terms of persistence and retention through mandatory student success courses. Uh, so this is an important key part of our enrollment management strategy uh, to ensure that first semester students keep coming back, uh, that their needs are taken care of, uh, and that um, this course is offered, of course, free of charge, and um, uh, the college is expected to increase student completions as a result of offering this and, and making it mandatory for all students. The second category is instructional program focused, uh, and this is um, really focused on the decline in enrollments through COVID and to, to offer better relevancy, uh, PCC launched micro pathway programs to re-engage learners who exited without earning a, a degree and reach uh, other learners that, that may not have considered attending college due to structural barriers or, or other impediments for them getting uh, a, a traditional model of higher education. And a third category was instructional program focused. And this is a really to address the unprecedented and increasing K-12 teacher shortage uh, that, that's in Arizona and frankly nationwide. And so this, uh, this focuses around our post-degree teacher certification program at Pima Community College, which innovatively addresses this need and is making a huge difference in Arizona and, and, and could address this need even outside of Arizona. Student Life and the Student Pride Alliance Club hosted the Pride Relay at Desert Vista Campus on November 4th. This event was held in honor of LGBTQ plus History Month. And employees and students formed relay teams for friendly competition to bring awareness and support uh, for LGBTQ plus people. Uh, there were resource fairs, booths, carts, team relays, and, and just, a, just a really great, great time. Student Affairs hosted our first ever First Generation Day on Tuesday, November 8th. Uh, our First Generation Proud Day included student connections with campus leadership and fellow students during campus meet and greet tabling. Uh, the formal session was held in the first gen panel titled, Tell Us Your Story with Roundtable Discussions. The 10 West Impact Festival was held November 1st through 5th at Tucson Community Center. The festival was billed as helps the curious and the impassioned solve the great economic, social, cultural, and economic challenges facing our communities. This year's theme was create, build, sustain. PCC was a strong partner for this event, including a keynote presentation by Chancellor Lambert on Sustain Day. Uh, breakout sessions included PCC on literature and the environment, Southern Arizona Coalition for Climate Adaption and Resilience, Why Autonomous Vehicles, and New Models for Majority Learners. The festival also included uh, the first annual 10 West Street Fest, featuring 100 plus local food and retail vendors. Uh, Pima Community College had over 20 tables to, to highlight and uh, demonstrate all of the programs that we offer. The third annual Pima Online Educators Conference Humanizing the Distance was held virtually on November 2nd through 4th. 
Uh, Chair Ripley, Provost uh, Duran Serta offered opening remarks, and the sessions that followed featured keynotes from Dr. Jean Ann Garcia and Dr. Thomas Tobin, a writing workshop by Tucson Poet Laureate T.C. Tolbert, a student panel, and a variety of different workshops. It was an amazing event with over 320 participants. And finally, you heard a lot last month about the Gospel Rescue Mission and the work that Pima Community College is doing for and with the residents there. The first Gospel Rescue Mission culinary graduates provided a fine for really a five course plated gourmet dinner service at, to, uh, to culminate their capstone project. This included uh, four chefs involved in the project, six restaurant owner managers, and two PCC representatives that came to, uh, to share and eat the, uh, the, the dinners formed. Special thanks to che Chef Gerald Wong and, and Carrie Middleton from Workforce for organizing the capstone night. So five students, five residents from, from the Gospel Rescue Mission graduated from the PCC culinary program that night which was amazing because this was a pilot program and very intense and very condensed, 11 weeks, meeting four to five hours a night, Monday through Friday, in order to, uh, to get all the competencies in and all the learning and training that was required. Five students graduated from the PCC culinary program that night. And one of the students even walked out of the Gospel Rescue Mission with us because he was no longer a resident of Gospel he was actually walking out to his his own home, to his own car, to his own job uh, with that fresh uh, certificate of completion that his dean I was able to give him and the other four graduates of our program. Just another great example of what Pima Community College is doing to reach out and to really serve the underserved of our community. Thank you and happy Thanksgiving. And that concludes my report. Thank you so much, Jim. Wow, that was a lot. You you unpacked a lot, um, and and uh, our employees uh, and our students put community in Pima Community College. I mean, the Ten West Fair, the Pride Run, the Gospel Mission. I mean, that's all community. So um, it's something to be proud of. Uh, thank you so much for what you do. And I just want to you know, mention Susie, um, our, our, our faculty, our staff, our employees, our administrators, our students have so much talent. So I say we try to, we try to hijack Susie at some event to sing the national anthem. We, 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 need, that, we need that voice. <laughs> thank you so much, Jim. Our next item is um, information items. So we have information, oh, sorry, I'm sorry, you know what? I did this before. Okay. Is it, is it, is it, is it, it's a Freudian slip. Um, the Chancellor yes. has 15 minutes. Ready, set, go. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'd like to start out by thanking our, our faculty, our staff, and administration and board for the great work we do focused on student success. If anybody doubts that this college is not committed to student success, I just want to put an exclamation point out on what Jim Craig said. You don't receive bellwether recognition if you're not at the local level delivering on a commitment to students and your community. So the fact that, again, we're being recognized in all three categories for our fast track programming, our teacher preparation programming, and our student success programming, I don't know what other evidence anyone needs to understand that deep commitment that we have to our students in our community. Also, I want to thank uh, Francisca James Hernandez and her entire team for hosting and throwing on another fabulous Raquel Rubio Goldsmith Lecture and Luncheon featuring uh, Arturo Vargas, the CEO of N N N Nalejo, the, the National Latino elected and appointed officials. Uh, great event, and many of you uh, uh, who were there uh, that evening or at the lunch, so thank you for being there. Uh, also, we, had the, we have the honor to, to be the host partner for Pony AI at our Automotive Technology and Innovation Center. This is a startup autonomous vehicle company valued at over $8 billion, and they're in our automotive center. 
Again, you do not have these kind of things happening if you're not committed to students and your community. Also, I am so proud to be able to, to, uh, 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 to represent Pima Community College as this, one, this year's honorary commander for the uh, 355th, 355th uh, Fighter Wing here at Davis Mothin. Um, also, um, Denise, you rock. I, was, I had a chance to visit her class and sit in and the way she engages students, that level of interaction, it, it just, you do such a great job, Denise. We're fortunate we have you in the classroom. Thank you. Um, also, um, just wanna thank the uh, Quilts of Honor Foundation. Uh, I know, Kat, last year you received a, a quilt. I was honored this year to receive one along with 14 other individuals. So I just want to thank them. And beautiful what they do in support of our veterans and, and all of our service members. Uh, also, because uh, this recognition came in late, I want to just recognize Paul Grijalva, uh, Director of our Contract Services, as the emerging with the Emerging Professional Award given to him by the Community College Business Officers Organization. So congratulations, Paul, for what you do for the college. And I wanna thank one of our key partners, Marcy Euler, for being recognized uh, as women leading in the region by Biz Tucson. So Marcy, thank you for all that you do. Uh, for, our, for our dreamers and DACA students, we're, we're very hopeful that Prop 301 is gonna make it across the yes finish line. 308, I'm sorry, 308, did, did I say 301? I'm 308. sorry, 308, thanks. Uh, so it's still looking good, so let's uh, keep, keep our fingers crossed. And, and as soon as that passes, we're gonna be able to, with the board's uh, approval, again offer in-state tuition. Uh, and I just wanna say thank you, Meredith, uh, for your service and your support of not only me, but of the college and for the great work that we have all done together. Damien, I also wanna thank you for your service and great support. I mean, we would not be able to do these great things that we've done over the last few years without you uh, and your leadership as chair of the, the board. Thank you both. And, that, and let me just say happy Thanksgiving and happy holidays as we move into uh, the holiday season. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chancellor. Now we go to information items. Uh, the information items were provided to the board for general information purposes. If any board member has clarifying questions regarding any of the information items, please let me know and we can have the Chancellor follow up or add the topic to a future agenda. So without any comments, we will now go to item three point, or sorry, four, item four, consent agenda. So the consent agenda was provided last week to our board members for review. May I have a motion to approve the items on the consent agenda? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion passes. The items on the consent agenda are approved. Thank you. And next we have uh, action items. I will turn it over to Mr. Sylvan to uh, present the, the first recommend, recommendation. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just to clarify, did you wanna move 5.1 to the end? Yes, please. All right, so we're gonna start with 5.2, the proposed annual calendar? Yes. Okay. The Chancellor recommends that the Governing Board approve the proposed annual calendar of regular board and study session meetings for 2023 and January 2024. Do I have a motion to approve item 5.2? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Signify by saying aye. Aye. We have five ayes, the ayes have it. So 5.2 proposed annual calendar of regular board and study sessions for 2023 has been approved. Thank you. Next item, Mr. Silva. 
For the next item, the Chancellor recommends the Governing Board authorize the Chancellor or designee to execute a contract with Design Modular Incorporated for the removal, construction, installation, and utility connections for new office and classroom modules for the college's truck driving program. Total costs are not expected to exceed $550,000. Thank you. Um, I think at this point we would like to hear from the Chancellor. A motion. A motion. Or, or first a motion. Sorry, I first need to call for a motion. Any, so, so moved. And a second. second. It has been moved and seconded. All those in favor, please signify by saying oh, aye. Hold on. I thought you were going to have the uh, oh, dis Chancellor I'm ahead comments myself. in discussion. I'm just, I just, okay. I'm looking at the clock and I want to move this on. All right. Chancellor. Please, if you will. Yes, Madam Chair. <laughs> um, so just as uh, context, uh, the board had already approved the work that we were doing with uh, this, uh, the, our truck uh, uh, transportation and training and maintenance uh, program. And this is the actual contract to be awarded, but not to exceed a certain amount. So if you have specific questions about this, I have uh, Dr. Dave B and I believe Brandy as well as available to answer any specific questions you might have. Okay, any questions? Without further discussion or questions, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? And this motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Mr. Sylvan, next item. Sorry. The next item, uh, 5.4, was discussion and possible approval to extend the term of the Chancellor's existing contract by one year, and then there were some other minor modifications to the uh, document, which was attached to the board report. Chair Ripley? Yes. If minute. I may, if I could uh, make a motion that we table this item. A motion has been made to table Second. this item. It was seconded. All those in favor of tabling item 5.4, please signify by saying aye. 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 The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Mr. Sylvan, next item. The next item is discussion and approval of the Higher Learning Commission Criterion 2 Evidence Plan and uh, Timeline, which was discussed at a prior board meeting. Um, attached is the resulting recommended plan based upon those comments from the board. Do I hear a motion to approve this? So moved. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Unless there is in discussion. Is there discussion? I, if I could just maybe make to... one small uh, modification, which is uh, based on uh, Michaela Hayes's comment during the call to the audience that uh, we slightly modify the language in the um, consent agenda, that makes it optional. So if, if I, so let me, I think I understand, and it wasn't intended to be preclusive of the board uh, requesting um, an item be pulled from the consent agenda. So to clarify, one of the items which I believe is what uh, Mr. Klinko is referring to that uh, Michaela Hayes was discussing in her comment was um, one of the proposed elements of the action plan was that by the end of business on Friday, the week before a board meeting, board members would submit notice that they wanted to remove an item from the consent agenda with an explanation of why and what information they wanted to clarify the issue. Um, the reason for including that was it, it, it satisfied two elements of the monitoring report. One is it provides evidence that the board has in fact read and considered the board packet, because obviously if you have a question like that, it meant, means by necessity you must have read it. And the second is it allows the board to take better advantage of the information resources available at the college because it would allow staff sufficient time to have the appropriate individual or documentation available in time for the board meeting. So what I believe the comment from uh, Michaela Hayes and what Mr. Klinko is saying is we can clarify that, that it, it, it doesn't preclude the board from after Friday at 5 o'clock asking for an item to be removed from the consent agenda, but we would urge the board or request if at all possible that that happen. So as I mentioned, it gives staff adequate time to get the information in time for the board meeting. But certainly if after that uh, a board member uh, realized there was a, a question about the item, they could certainly pull it at a later time and we can make that clarification. Thank you very much. Any other discussion? 
So with that, are we altering the, mo the, the motion? Well, I, I, made, I, I made the motion with the amendment, so, and I believe it was seconded. Was it, was it seconded? Who was there? So one way to do this is, sorry, um, one way to do this is I believe Ms. Garcia made the motion. Mr. Klinko had a requested amendment. If Ms. Garcia accepts that as a friendly amendment, then we could just vote on the motion. If she doesn't, then we would vote on the proposed amendment. Is that? I accept it. Okay. okay. Then the motion as amended is the motion on the floor for vote by the board. Okay, so at this time, if there are no further discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And so this motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, then Mr. Silva, next item. So the next item uh, was to allow for discussion and if the board uh, believed it was appropriate to uh, take an action related to board compliance with state law and college policies and in particular this relates to the um, follow-up requirements noted in the HLC October 6, 2022 decision letter. Okay, at this time I'm not anticipating a motion uh, to take action, but I will open this up for any discussion should board, member, board members desire. Chair Ripley? Yeah, yes, board member Klinko. Yes, yeah, so I, su I submitted the attached letter to the board item um, because I, I am deeply concerned about ongoing violations of our bylaws um, and Arizona state law um, by members of this board. And I am particularly concerned that given the uh, clarity with which the Higher Learning Commission uh, provided guidance to this board uh, for as part of their monitoring plan that not continuing to follow bylaws and uh, Arizona law is going to result in the college being put on academic probation by the accreditors. And it is deeply, deeply concerning, um, especially in this last meeting, um, that this continues to go on. And uh, I you know, asked that it be put on so that we could have a discussion uh, in hopes to um, not have this continue. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, and I, and I think in the spirit of, of moving forward, um, uh, especially in light of, of all that's happened with the HLC and with our um, next year being you know, re-accredited through the HLC, which is a whole different topic, um, I, I, I just would like to make a plea to the board, to this board, um, and to the board with the future board members that we do move forward and, and agree to um, really understand and look at board policy and bylaws um, and and you know vow to not break them and to move forward and to treat treat each other respectfully and professionally do the homework and um, you know just just move forward because again uh, I would and I think we all agree that this college is is bigger, much bigger than us in this, this small board. It is about the students, it's about our community, it's about our employees, faculty, staff, administrators. So um, I, I don't think we need to, unless someone does want to make a motion, I don't think we need to, um, but I do want to, I just wanted to make that statement. Thank you for your statement to uh, Board Member Klinko. Yes, uh, Board Member Garcia. Okay, I would like to, I, I'm not sure how to do this, but I'd like to make a motion that with the new board coming on, that we have a study session on these particular issues. I don't know if you need a motion. I think I think that's just something you make happen. Uh, there, there, are, all the study sessions are are um, uh, scheduled, and I don't think that the topics have been assigned. But this is the board's decision to assign which topics, and that could be any month. But there needs to be a study session. Well, yeah. so that would be appropriate for a future agenda item. Yes. Yeah for future agenda okay. I'm very, absolutely yeah. I, I think you know I think that it, in order for us to move forward mm -hmm. that it would be really good for us to just state what's going on or our feelings or whatever and you know and what the laws or what the policies and procedures are I think that we can do this and I'm looking forward to that so I really want to include the entire new board and yes in the future agenda sorry Okay, so uh, duly noted for future agenda item and for uh, a study session. We have a lot of study sessions we need. Okay, uh, with that, um, um, Mr. Silva, is there another action item? Um, so uh, one other um, discussion item. 
and that has to do with the format for future board meetings. Um, so from time to time, the board has visited the issue of, of uh, in what format board meetings should be conducted in person, virtual or hybrid. And so this was added to the agenda uh, because of a request at a prior board meeting that um, the topic be revisited. So this is, uh, we agendized this, so it's an opportunity for the, for the board to discuss uh, what it would like to do with respect to that topic at this time. Okay, so at this time, just to be clear, is is there a, a motion or this is just for discussion? Um, so it's just for discussion to give staff direction essentially on what we should be planning for for the upcoming board meetings. Okay, great. I, and, and you're talking about being hybrid or virtual or in person, is this what we're talking about? Just to right. be clear so for the audience. At, at different times over the last couple of years, mm -hmm. for different reasons, at different times, um, right. we've had uh, live regular in-person board meetings, we've had hybrid board meetings, right. and we've had virtual only. Um, the last okay. few board meetings we've done in this hybrid format, mm -hmm. and so uh, different board members at different times have requested to revisit the issue, and that was the reason for adding this item to the discussion. If the board would like to, you don't have to, uh, mm -hmm. but if the board would like to do so at this time, we put it on the agenda. Great, thank you so much. And yeah, and, and just um, uh, to kick it off, I think that uh, we all agree that it, having um, in-person anything is always preferable. Um, we've had two years, oh, almost three years of pandemic and, and Zoom and in, in that the necessity drove that decision. Um, the decision to go full on open to the public I think is one that should be made soon. Um, the decision not to do that today was made, um, not made lightly, but it was made in light of several articles, several warnings by the Department of Homeland Security as well as other security forces that the day after the election and this one in particular nationally as well as locally could have violent uh, results so we didn't make the decision uh, for the safety of this board to uh, have this last board meeting of, of 2022 um, in this this virtual um, well hybrid um, format. so so with that yes I think we're all ready to make a decision did you can you guys hear me check 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 um, I think it's it's time to open up the uh, the suggestions. Any any discussion? Anybody? Okay. So I think um, between now and January, uh, precluding anything else. I mean, who knows? There could be a resurgent of God knows what disease. Um, I think it's something that the board should be nimble enough and resilient enough to also make last minute decisions in, in uh, uh, to err on the side of safety and health. Any other dis discussion? Okay, thank you. And and did we, we have one more, Mr. Sullivan? So last item uh, for this section of the agenda has to do with uh, board officer positions. Yes, thank you. And, and I would like to open up with a very short uh, remark. Um, so at this time, I would like to, if you haven't read the board documents, I would like to officially announce that um, sadly and with a heavy heart, I must step down as chair of the board at this time. I am now in charge of full care for my mother, who is 89 years old and on oxygen, among other issues. Uh, it happened about 11 months ago, and I've been feeling the strain of doing too much, et cetera. Um, so I do, I do need to step down, down at this time. It, does, it takes truly uh, a, a lot of work, um, which I enjoy, but to be an effective and responsible board chair, it does take, it, it does consume a lot of your time and effort and, and at times emotions. So in the end, both will soon suffer, my mother as well as the school, if I don't make this decision. Uh, so again, I make this decision with a heavy heart. Thank you to those who have supported me in this position. Um, so at this time, in accordance with, um, with our bylaws and uh, policies um, for the interim period, um, when the board cha chair steps down, the vice chair will step in and um, we will go from there. So any, uh, any discussion? All right, thank you for that. Thank you for listening and hearing me out. With that, I think that concludes the action items, correct? It does. The only uh, item left would be if the board members have additional requests from, uh, excuse me, for future, um, oh, I'm sorry. You're right. Uh, it does conclude the action items. Pardon me. Um, the next item on the agenda would be uh, board remarks. Precisely. I, excuse me. Wait, yes. I'm not finished yet. Okay, so what you're saying is that since you're stepping down, now Klinko will take your place. Is that correct? For now. For, and for now, until the end. Yeah, I mean, he's... It, okay. Yeah. 
Okay. So with that, um, we uh, come to um, item number six, remarks by governing board members. So I will, let's just go around the horn. Uh, board member Garcia. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that um, thank you, uh, Damien and <laughs> Meredith for your service. Um, I wish you the best. And uh, I'm looking forward to the, to the new year um, in working with all the, the entire board and compromising and hopefully listening and doing the best we can to move this institution forward. And um, thank you for all the people that got the awards. Outstanding job. And um, have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you. Board Member Gonzalez. I also just want to acknowledge that they, um, thank you for uh, providing the, uh, the time and, and um, energy here with the, uh, with the Pima Community College. I know that it's a, it's a lot of work. I, um, I do understand now in reference to not only the commitment, but the, uh, the, uh, uh, that's the, uh, all the work that needs to be done. And the work that needs to be done, as we all know, we're here for a, pers uh, for a purpose and that's to providing the best possible uh, education for all of our students as well, too. I know that next year we're going to have two, two new members. Um, I don't think we know who the new members are yet, but I think uh, we'll work together and, uh, and find a common ground in reference to what we want to do and can do better as well, too. As I mentioned before, it's nothing new. It's that there's always room for improvement uh, for, for all of us but also for the students in reference to the, the courses, but also in reference to whatever new initiatives that the new board, uh, other ideas that are going to be coming in, energy and, and ideas that will be coming in as well, too. And I just want to say to the PCC uh, family out there, the students and faculty, have, have a, a great Thanksgiving uh, uh, event. He, um, he, and blessings to all reference to having what we have today, but also uh, what we're going to have tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. And Board Member Hay. Thank you, Chair. I want to um, first thank Chancellor Lambert for his leadership for the college. And it's been an honor and privilege to work with you the last six years and advance your agenda and the agenda of the board. It's been a real kick in the pants to work with Mr. Klinko here and, and it's been a lot of fun. I think we made a lot of progress. I want to thank Andrea. Where is she? Behind the post. Oh. Hello there. Andrea and all the staff and uh, who just done a tremendous job of keeping this board on track and keeping us informed and and rolling in the, in the right direction. And I um, wish the new board members all the best of luck and work hard to make PCC a, the best college ever in the world. So anyway, thanks everybody, appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. Hay, you rock. And uh, Board Member Klinko. Thank you, Chair Ripley. Again, I, I wanna echo um, Dr. Hay's remarks. Um, first, Chancellor Lambert, thank you so much for the opportunity to work with you. You know, I joined this board because I believed really this college could become a national model and really be one of the best community colleges in the country. And I think we did that. And I'm so proud of that. You should be. Really everybody in this room. I'm sorry for being a little emotional, but I think it takes, you know, the community coming together through arguments and through discussion to come out with a better outcome. And I think this college is a shining example um, of what can be in America because it creates opportunity. It created opportunity for me. It creates opportunity for people I know. And I um, just want to thank everybody. From the bottom of my heart. Thank you, thank you so much, Damien and and Meredith. Um, we are. I know you're both tall, but we are standing on the shoulders of two giants here in academia and in our community. I mean, seriously, it is an emotional time because, and and it's just a testament to the fact that you care so much about this school, about the people here. The it's it's the people that make this college amazing. And, and, the, and the fact that you worked so hard for these buildings and for the centers is because the people deserve those centers. They deserve these buildings. They deserve 
the state of the art equipment and talent that you both have fought so hard for and and championed with Chancellor Lambert. Uh, a lot of behind the scenes things happen that people don't see and, and I've had a tiny glimpse of it and, and I'm just amazed and I'm grateful because so much, most all of what you see today happened way before I joined the board. So thank you so much for your leadership and your in being a role model to other board members. Thanks, thanks so much. I want to say more because I just, uh, I'm going to miss you guys. Um, so with that, I don't have any written remarks, but I do want to give out some uh, shout outs um, because I feel like board remarks should be about this. It should be about us telling the, the, the world out there, the Zoom world and the people that are in the audience, Andrea, um, what we've been doing as a board, a lot of people don't know what we do. You know, you know what, what do we do? Do we stay home for a month and then show up? You know, once once a month. Um, I know. I for one, I try to attend everything I can to include uh, the Aztecs, the the women Aztecs the other night who um, played their first basketball game and and um, and it wasn't about winning because it was a smaller college that they played, but it was Indigenous Peoples Night and it was an honor and a privilege. I went last year too, and so I went again this year. And um, the, the 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 coaches are incredible. The the women are amazing. I sat with some of the moms and um, and their siblings, and it's just it's 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 what we're all about. It's community sitting there eating popcorn and, and watching these these women, these strong, powerful women, do what they do. And I'm am so proud that Pima is able to still do that. I still I'm I'm just going to give my plug for, for 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 girls sports. It's really important. And with that said, the women and the men, we were hosting the uh, and. I'm going to say this wrong, NJCAA, I think it is, uh, Division II tournament um, this weekend, I believe it kicks off starting Sunday, and that's an honor and a privilege that we are afforded, we, Pima Community College, we're hosting that with, with Casino del Sol, and, and that's a big deal, and our, our players are phenomenal. Um, so they're both, I think, ranked, I'm just going to lie and say they're ranked number one. I think they are ranked number one, though. In the top 10, yeah. At one time, they were ranked number one, I think it was last month. Um, they're up there. So so those guys are amazing. Um, Veterans Day is this week. Um, I'm going to be speaking at the Veterans Center, and I want to give a shout out to Hector Acosta, who's led the Veterans Center for many years. He's retiring, and it's sad, um, but, you know, he deserves a break. Um, he, his love for our students, our veteran students, is, is unmatched. Um, the blood, sweat, and tears went into those centers at all of our campuses. Thank you, Hector, and um, I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow and honoring our veterans. It means so much, I can tell you personally, from these, especially the combat veterans coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq and God knows where, um, to be able to come here and feel safe and comfortable, not just at this school, but in, in the environment that you created at the vet centers. It's, it's truly amazing. Thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, and again, I always thank the music department. I did not see your last musical. I intend to go to Cabaret because um, it's one of my favorite plays. So uh, if you haven't gotten tickets, go to Cabaret. It's a fun, beautiful musical. And, um, and, and, and one last shout out. I probably have a whole bunch. I'm missing somebody. But to, to the political science department, you know who you are. Um, for keeping us informed objectively and accurately and uh, with an academic uh, lens over what's happening in the world. We get really caught up in what's going on right here in little teeny little Pima County, but there's a lot going on in the world. In political science department, you guys are amazing for giving us very keen insights on China, on Ukraine, on what's happening in, in NATO, East Europe, in Eastern Europe, and, and Russia, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's so much going on in Africa. I can go on, but thank you, political science department. I love you guys. I will always love you. Um, and with that, um, um, I think we might have a, a request for any any request for announcements or um, future agenda items. The one agenda item announcement. Just the one. Yep, we got that. We got that down. Yes, uh, Board Member Gonzalez. I just was. <clears throat> I just also want to do a shout out reference to the Indigenous Month for for November. I know it's, uh, there's a lot of events and activities. I did attend the, uh, um, the indigenous uh, basketball game. I was there, uh, met a couple of other people there. It's uh, very good that uh, the community comes together. I'm very proud of the, the two uh, indigenous flags that are behind us, the Pascua Yaquen and the Hana Autumn uh, Nation flag. But I, I do want to reiterate in reference to also uh, follow up on uh, Chair Ripley in reference to the acknowledgement of the uh, the veterans out there, our tribe is uh, the tribe is also having some events 
uh, beginning on Friday as well too. But I think it's uh, we need to acknowledge those people, uh, those soldiers. Uh, I do have uh, uh, families, uh, members that serve not only in Vietnam but also serve in in, in uh, various uh, uh, in the army as well too. But I I do want to acknowledge that. Uh, that's one area that I think it's a very uh, uh, without them. Well, they're sacrificed, but now a majority of them are, are gone already. But uh, thanks for your service uh, to all the service people out there. Thank you. I'm I'm a sailor. I'm a sa I'm a sailor, and I love those Marines. Okay, thank you. And with that, if there are no further items, I declare this meeting adjourned. Righteous.